So I made this bed for our upstairs bedroom a couple of years back. And I made some matching, although they don't have a whole lot in common, some matching side tables. Um, so it's time to make a matching chest of drawers. So we've probably had this thing 40 years. It was painted in a strip of paint. And it's not bad, but it's kind of Yankee. So I'm going to make a new piece. Um, I would kind of like to make it match the bed and the table. So we definitely use pecan. It's the same lumber. Um, I made another chest in the other bedroom and I made it match by using walnut fill which is on the bed and then when I made the end tables I put the little sticks on the ends which kind of mimics this so this is like a nice set they kind of go together and I would like for the chest in the other bedroom to go with the bed um, so this bed has the sunburst pattern on the bottom I, I kind of partial to that I've done a lot of beds a lot of things with that so I drew these plans on this piece of cardboard and on the right side I did not put the frame between the drawers even though it'll be there you just won't see it on the left side I put a frame between the drawers and me and my bride had a vote and we kind of like this side um, on the cardboard, I just have this as a one inch strip, um, kind of similar to this. And on the other dresser, I made it wider. On the first dresser I made, I made it wider. I like this better. On the first dresser, I made an arched bottom, which I like. Um, even though it doesn't go with the bed, the bed has a flat bottom. So I'm going to go with an arched bottom. Again, this bed has a flat bottom, but we will put an arch on this. Um, these little end tables have the legs kicked out at a 45 degrees, and I like that. But I don't see any practical way to do that and match the um, with the dresser. So I think I have direction. I'm going to go start cutting up some boards and gluing. So every time I start a project, my intention is to do perfect work. Uh, accurate measurements, good cuts, and just have a perfect job. And there's a gene in my head trying to make me do that. But I think there's two of them that say, hurry up, go fast, it doesn't matter. And I usually end up with good work, but not perfect work. So starting off this new project, and I want to do perfect work, like everybody probably does. So I cut out the material for the sides. They need to be um, 30 inches and 20 inches wide. So I cut them smaller so I could rip them. Um, they're real thick and I only need a half inch. So I cut them where I could rip them on the table saw. And instead of cutting them 30, I cut them all 20. So here we go. I've got a bunch of 20s that I don't need and I need 30s. Here we go again. So I've cut a bunch of uh, the pecan 30 inches long and the ones that were wide I ripped them in half because I only have a 6 inch joiner. So I want to be able to joint these and then run them through the table saw and use the table saw as a resaw and then I will glue them all back together and I need to make the two end panels for the dresser that would be roughly 20 by 30 or less than that actually. So I've run this first batch of boards through the joiner. It took a lot because they're real twisty and this stuff's hard as a rock. But uh, my goal was not to get 100% but just to get a surface flat enough to follow the uh, rip fence on the table saw. I'm going to resaw them on the table saw. Okay, first set of boards. I got them resawn on the table saw to three quarters of an inch thick. I have enough to make my two end panels which will be 20 inches less than the corner pieces so I've got plenty here. So I'm going to um, I'm gonna have to rejoin them because they sprung a lot when I um, ran them through the table saw and made them thinner and then I will glue these up into four batches about 10 inches wide so I can run them through my uh, thickness planer 
And once they're run through the thickness planer, I will re-glue the two halves together and I will have the two end panels uh, fabricated, not cut to size, but at least put together. Yeah, I'm sorting out the frame that's going to go on the back. Um, it needs to be strong because that's where the racking resistance comes from and typically I would just uh, staple a whole sheet of plywood on the back to make it strong, but I was trying to do something a little different. So I'm going to make a wooden frame. Um, these are the correct height. That's 29 inches so that allows for a one inch top. And these are the correct length, but obviously I'm going to have to cut them shorter to make a mortise and tenon joint here. Um, obviously I'll have to cut this one shorter for a mortise and tenon joint top and bottom. And I'll have to plow a groove for plywood all the way around. There'll be two sheets of plywood. I need it kind of snug and I will glue it so it will be strong. Um, I don't have the plywood. i got to run to Home Depot and get plywood because quarter inch plywood is not quarter inch anymore and I want to make sure that I plow this uh, the right uh, that the joint is the right width but in the meantime I need to joint one face of all these are all twisty this pecan is really difficult for me to work with or for anybody to work with I'll joint one face and then I'll run it through the planer I'll bring all of these uh, five pieces to the same thickness and I'll keep it as thick as I can but I'm not sure what I'm going to end up with. So I'm going to start jointing and planing. Okay, I'm still working on the back frame. I plowed a dado, I think that's called, on all the perimeter of all the um, pieces in its size to fit the plywood I bought. And I have an X on the side that I referenced to the table saw fence because it's probably not exactly in the center although I tried to get it in the center. If I keep all the X's facing the same way, it'll work, it'll be copacetic. Um, this is full length, this is one inch shorter than the total um, dresser, and I'm gonna have a one inch top. So this is good. These were the correct width, but I'm just gonna have a one inch mortise and tenon. So I removed the right amount, I hope. And this one is going to go between these two rails, so I remove the right amount so that I can have a one inch tenon here and here. So now I'm going to set up my mortiser and make some marks. And I have to chop one, two, three, four, six mortises, which will take longer to set up the mortiser machine than to cut the mortises. frame is dry fit. Everything fits pretty good, nice and snug. Um, I've checked each board on the plywood to make sure the plywood will go in the groove because it's kind of tight. So tomorrow I will knock this thing apart and sand these inside edges and put the plywood in and glue this. This will be done. And tomorrow I can run the four side pieces through the planer and then re-glue them into 20 inch wide widths. Um, in progress. The joints on these pieces, this frame, um, they fit really good, really tight. So I'm using yellow glue. Um, yellow glue needs a tight fit. It's not a good gap filler. Um, some of the other frames um, coming up in the future, I had some loose joints, so I use epoxy with a thickener in it. And epoxy with a thickener is a good gap filler. So I use whatever glue works best for the situation. Um, 
The good thing about yellow glue, it's summertime, it's hot, I can clamp it, and in a couple hours, I can take the clamps off. The epoxy really takes overnight. So I did a dry fit before I did the glue fit and when I did the dry fit it clamped up square when I put glue on it and clamped it it was a little racked so all I had to do was shift these two long bar clamps a little bit of a skew and it pulled it square again um, I'm glad I checked because I would at first I was just gonna assume it was good because it was good when I did it dry but uh, we got this sorted out These are the four panels I glued up yesterday, and today I ran them through the thickness planer to get them all the same, thin them down a little bit, and I jointed the edge, so I'm going to glue these two panels together, and that's going to be the two ends of the um, chest of drawers, and I'll probably set these in a frame, just like I did the plywood on the back. I pulled my next plank, and I cut it uh, way longer than I need for the front styles. And I ripped uh, how many I need? Two and a half inches. I got four of them out of this plank, two of them out of this plank. And I need to joint these because they're twisted and joint one edge and run them through the thickness planer until they're all the same thickness. And that'll be the verticals and then the horizontals. I can cut out of the ones that I accidentally cut too short yesterday. So, time for the joiner. So out of the styles I ripped, I saved, this is a pair right off the board, and this is a pair. And I'm going to use these to turn the corner between the side and the front so the grain can be continuous. So I'm going to take this piece and this piece and put them in a safe place where I won't cut them up. And then I just need to make sure that I have this on the front corner of the uh, side frame. So I now need to cut the tops and the bottoms. So I've got my stock prepared for the um, rails and styles of the two end pieces. Um, I'm going to do what I did before. I'm going to plow a groove around the interior. Um, this time I'll make the groove a little wider because that was half inch that was quarter inch plywood, which is really three sixteenths about. This is a five eighths solid wood, so I'm going to plow three eighths of an inch by half inch deep. And then I'm going to use that half inch uh, dado as the joint. And I'm going to only make these tenons a uh, half inch long. That should be more than uh, strong enough for these small little panels. And I have an X on all the surfaces. And if I keep the X to the fence, 
then even if the uh, the groove the dado is not perfectly centered they'll all match up so that's that's next so all my pieces are cut to length I plowed the dado and all the pieces and now I've cut the joint on the um, bottom and the top it came out a little looser than I would have preferred so I'm going to glue this with epoxy with thickened epoxy because it's uh, the right glue for this situation and I think I'll just glue the bottom on both of these and leave the top loose and then I'm going to prepare the side panels sand them and get them cleaned up and uh, so I'll slide them from the top and then glue the last one as a separate clamping operation So the panels for the end frames I glued up um, yesterday and the day before. I just cut them to length and width and now I'll give them a good sanding and maybe by the time I'm through cleaning these at well, probably put a coat of varnish on them before I put them in the frame. So won't get the frames put together today, but I do have the bottom rail glued in and clamped. So when we get these right, we'll have to... Um, cut a relief in the back because this is thicker than the um, dado. We'll slide them in and we'll have the ends done. So I've been on a roll doing good stuff, not messing up. Uh, these are the end panels and these are scraps from the styles and the rails. So obviously the end panels are much thicker than the groove. So I cut a notch and at first I was going to put the notch on the inside where it wouldn't show. But I think it's going to look... What's going on here? But I think it's going to look better with the notch on the outside so the panel almost flushes up. It's a little bit short. And I'll hit that edge maybe with a plane or with a little sandpaper. I got the first one and everything's lovely. And then I started cutting the second one. And things went south because I cut the wrong side. I cut the inside of the joint instead of the outside of the joint, um, which will only leave a minuscule amount of wood. It's pretty disheartening. And then I realize it's not gonna show because it goes on the inside behind all the drawers. So I'm gonna fill this with thickened epoxy and uh, maybe put it together before anybody sees it, so don't tell. I did a dry fit of the one that I didn't screw up and it looks pretty darn good. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna take it out and varnish it before I put it in. And I gotta still gotta fill these little holes. That's no big deal. Final glue up with thickened epoxy and uh, once I get it clamped I'm using a screwdriver to kind of scoot the panel around to get the reveal the same all the way around because I got a feeling um, once this glue sets, I'm not going to be able to move the panel anymore. So, took some time, got it straight, and uh, looks it came out real good. Okay, next day the glue is dry. I did some work off camera. Uh, I did some preliminary sanding of the joints to get them all flat. I cut a notch in the side panel to receive the back panel just to kind of make this a little more structurally sound and I'm going to use screws here I'll plug them later um, this is going to let me put it together with the screws and if I do need to take it apart to mess with drawer glides I can take it apart at the last minute I will glue it and I ripped the front of the side panels at a 45 and I took the drops that I had saved earlier that match these boards and I'm getting ready to glue them on here at a 45 and that's going to give the impression that this is a real um, heavy corner post which it's not so I'm going to glue this it's going to be kind of tricky because when you clamp stuff at 45 it wants to squirm but if it gives me any trouble I'll just shoot some little uh, pin nails in here to kind of hold it and uh, I'm getting ready to do some gluing
Okay, we're all glued up, and probably a pretty good time to end this video. It's getting a little long. So the next part will be a little more finicky. The face frames and the um, supports for the drawers. We'll start those probably in about three hours when this glue dries and I can get these clamps off. Thanks for watching.